Welcome to the Tuesday, February the 20th, 2024 meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. We'll let staff and members introduce themselves. Meredith Crandall, staff. Martha Smirsky, member. William Russell, member. Stephen Everett, member. Rebecca Owens, member. Is Eric there or? He is. Eric, you need to unmute yourself. Eric Gilbertson, member, so. Okay, at this point, we'll let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures and process. Okay, as most everybody is aware, this is mostly for um, people who are attending or attending watching via Orca Media. Um, for those viewing tonight's design review meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in the discussion via the Zoom platform through either video or telephone access options. Um, if you want the full video experience, you can type this link into your web browser and I will get a little notification that you want to get into the meeting. Alternatively, you can dial this telephone number and when prompted, put in this meeting ID and again, I'll get a prompt to um, let you into the meeting. If anyone is trying to access the meeting and having problems, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. I will be monitoring my email throughout the meeting. Um, for those attending via Zoom, turning your video on is optional. Um, and uh, if anyone does get on uh, partway through the meeting, if anybody's out watching via Orca and wants to get on, when you get into the meeting, please make sure that your microphone is on mute when you're not speaking. This will help reduce background noise um, and we'll make sure to check in with you um, and, and give you an opportunity to comment on the items on the design reviews agenda. Um, a reminder that the Zoom chat function should only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions. Um, otherwise, if somebody gets on and has a question about an item on the agenda, please raise your hand, either physically if you have the video turned on or by using the raise hand button on your toolbar. If anyone calls in, you can press star nine on your phone and this will let us all see a raise hand. Um, in the event the public is unable to access tonight's meeting, and I would get notice of that through my email, the meeting will need to be continued to a time, place, and certain. I'll now hand the meeting back over to the chair. At this point, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? I'll move to approve the agenda. This is Martha. Second. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Eric. Martha. William. Rebecca. Stephen. Yep, that's everybody. Okay, agenda is approved. Unless anybody has anything else to add at this point, we'll go forward with the first application for 27 East State Street. Welcome, Paul. Describe your application. Uh, the application is a new front porch on 27 East State Street. Um, the uh, And the process is the same thing that I've done on the barbershop building, which is to adhere to the historical you know, norms as, as I try to put it back with the same lumber in the same way that it was originally built. Uh, it had, I talked to um, Jimmy's brother who had repaired the porch in 1971 and said it desperately needed repairing. And the bottom line was 30 years, the, the postman had put his foot through the decking on the, at the top of the stairs and the two uphill posts had completely rotted out because there's a river that comes out of the backyard when it rains and during the flood we lost that whole end of the porch and the roof was sagging and it was just you know I, I would have come over and gotten a building permit but I kind of had to do it right away so um, it's 2 by 12 uh, skirt all the way around. It's two by tens in the center. Uh, the only thing that's not from 1850 is the joist hangers. It is built up to code. Um, it's got techno metal posts supporting the front beam across the front. And the only thing that I didn't do 
the port, the original historic posts um, were set on the railing, and that's why the whole thing was falling down. So I opted for the square posts that come all the way up from the deck um, to support the roof, and then I did the framing around those. Uh, the posts are not done. We ran out of warm weather. Um, it is going to be painted to match the house, blue and white. Uh, the posts, I put a little schematic of what I'm going to do with the posts. I can't make them round, but they are going to get the original Florida de lis um, braces on the top. There's going to be a crown molding element on the top, a baseboard on the bottom, and a, and a chair rail, for lack of a better term, in the center. So the po posts will be painted blue and white. Um, the molding will get painted blue, and the posts will be painted white, just like the old posts. So it'll look, except for the squareness of it, it'll be exactly the way it was back together with the original Florida leaves. I'll get that done in the spring. Um, and I really did try to do it historically. The, if you'll note, if you can see close on the thing, it's got a traditional uh, hardwood drip drip edge uh, made out of wood at the bottom of the shingles. I mean, it's an 1850s porch. Um. And you anticipate painting the, cla the shingles? Shingles will be blue. The rail, um, the you know, the handrail will be white um, all the way around. Uh, the posts will be the post itself will be white and the trim elements on the post will be blue mm -hmm. and that's what the original was kind of just trying to keep it up with that you know three color Victorian paint job mm -hmm. type thing one thing you can do that we have done successfully to make it look a little closer to what it was before was just to take a router and either round the edges or scallop do it I will be glad to use the edge if you look at the detail on the um, on the rail on the mm -hmm. handrail uh, the 2 by 12 handrail I've done yep. that all the way around and matched that I'll be glad to do that no problem at all I it won't I'll have to do it after I add the trim pieces because I can't it won't flush out if I if I round it and then do the trim pieces. But I'll do the trim pieces and ease the edges all the way around. I'll make it as round as I can. <laughs> well, you don't have to cut too far in. Yeah. But if you, it just take, you know, about half to three quarters on either side. And again, it can either round it off or you can cove it. I got cove, a three cove. quarter, I got a three quarter inch quarter round router bit that will run right up that and just put a nice rounded edge on it. That'll be yeah. It'll also, if you if you do some of the trim detailing, rounded, it it looks continuous rather than the edge. Yeah, if you look at the handrail, that's what I did. I it, there's a continuous eased edge all the way around on, yes. the, on the handrail, and that's I'll be glad to do that on the posts. I'm not. I mean, it's my it's my house. I'm going to make it look really nice. I I like to do work myself, and I like. Is there any reason when you uh, replaced the shingles on the front that you didn't do them staggered uh, to match the original? No, uh, they didn't have them at sticks and stuff. That's not a matter of having them. It's a matter of the carpenter just nailing them on there that way. No, I didn't do that. I'm the carpenter, so I did not do it that way. Would you like me to redo the shingles? <laughs> Probably because they match that, then they would match those up in the gable end, which are staggered. And that's the way it was designed. What kind of condition are the turn, turn posts you took off uh, in? They are not in good condition. And they are not original either. They do appear to be from the 1970s. They are a hollow fabricated post and the bottoms of all of them are, are rotted out. The, those turn posts are pretty readily available. Uh, I think Miles has them. I don't know about sticks and stuff. 
Uh, but did you make, uh, did you look and see if you could find p turn posts? Yeah, but like I said, I couldn't get a turn post. Well, so first of all, it's it's a considerable amount more money. And second of all, um, they do not, they did not have a post that would go from the deck to the roof. And I did not want to set a post on top of a railing again and have it. I mean, literally, like when I, when I braced the roof up and I put my foot on the railing, it fell down. So I was within a, I was within a good storm of losing the roof. And, and it's just not a good construction technique. The, the, those square posts are framed into the deck and framed into the railing. They're not going anywhere. They'll be there for 200 years. Yeah. What are the, uh, a decent timber framer or carpenter could splice uh, the extensions on the bottom of, a, of posts. Uh, it's not a, not a difficult joint to make. You can make a lap joint and reinforce it. Well, there's a number of different joints you can do. I So I do do timber framing. I'm quite good at it. And I would agree with that, except why not just use a square post? It's a hundred percent stronger and cheaper and less time consuming. I think there are, there's plenty of examples of, of <clears throat> turn posts and on porches that are that are bucklings, you know. And so I, uh, I don't know if we necessarily need to ask the for a dis, for a structural flaw to be re to re be redone. There are a lot of porches with post balancing on railings. And there are a lot of them are a lot of them. Are, you're effectively putting a hinge yeah. in there rather than a, a fixed a fixed joint. I'm I'm just having a problem because the turn posts are really uh, a distinctive feature in the building. It's pretty easy to see uh, in the uh, as built uh, or the original photographs. Okay, I mean, I would like to see the original original photographs because, like I said, that post that porch was built in 1971. So, I don't know. The last time I was here at Design Review, we ran up into the same problem because I wanted to replace windows on the barbershop building with energy efficient windows, and I was told that I could not replace those windows. I had to have them rebuilt because they were original. And when I did the demo and tore into the windows, the windows were from 1975, and they were single pane. And they weren't in good shape. So um, I, I, I don't want to get testy about it, but I try really, really hard to put these. Let me, let me put it this way. When I bought these two buildings, they were not anywhere near original condition. They did not look like they were from 1850. That house that I bought from Jimmy was wrapped in fake red brick tar paper. I pulled all that tar paper off. I put it back to the original siding and I've rebuilt that porch so it matches the house. Um, I did the best I could with what I had. Um, I've tried to keep, you know, I'm a labor force of one. I've got multiple projects I have to do. I can't spend, you know, an entire year rebuilding a front porch. And yet I try very hard to put it back to what it was originally. I think I did a good job. The neighbors think I did a good job. You understand the difficulty it makes for design review uh, when we're reviewing something that's already been done. Got it. Didn't mean to do that. I really didn't. I've gone through the design review process several times. I pull permits. I'm not, I'm not, I apologize for that. I really do. Um, the flood took out the two uphill posts. I was going to lose the roof. I had to get the port shored up. Uh, that's what I did. City Hall was shut down. I just I just went ahead. I pushed ahead. Um, I, there's a lot of examples of my work on those two buildings, and I'm, I'm not. I want those houses to look like they're from 1850. That's what I want. I suspect the staggered shingles were added long after that, but they're part of the historic uh, character of the house. Uh, are you willing to redo the shingles on the 
on the front and, and staggered? No. Do you have any of the old pictures of the house? I have the original pictures? picture of the porch, I think, on there. Um, I don't have a historic picture of that house, of the front of it. I have a historic picture of the roof line. I think it's looking from the top of the hill. Mm -hmm. But that's the only one I have. I suspect those shingles are were originally staggered in the gable end sometime in the twenties, <clears throat> and then the uh, whoever rebuilt the porch in seventy one uh, rematched them again. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if you you know, yeah, I like the staggered shingles. Uh, I didn't really think about it. I mean, it was November fifteenth, and it was getting quite cold, so I did. I did try to button it up for the winter. Yeah, I'll just say that I'm personally less concerned about the staggered shingles. I know that it's an historic mark, but we do, but it's it looks like it from the photos. I haven't been by it. It looks like it's nice quality shingle work. It's of a similar scale and texture. Um, and then you do have some of that up on the on the gable. Um, I think what you know what, and I I do I understand that the that round like I wouldn't want to put a round post in my on a on a railing in my in my own house just because that I know it's going to move. And at some point, the I think the concern for me is that it <clears throat> you're the, a lot of these a lot of these posts are um, like the the color the paint and the the photos not clear enough for me to see here but the a lot of the paint comes out where the wood's taken away um so you're it's kind of at the where it gets smaller and yeah. your, your detail is actually kind of pushing it out and making it well that i gave junk, meredith the de so i have a detail of how the post is going to look um right it's it's in the it's in the packet yeah right so it will be i mean it's not going to be as tapered in in the center in between those, but it is going to go wide, you know, wide skinny, wide skinny. Yeah. What, one thing that's you know just one one option might be to to take a small a kind of a thin piece of trim, and and just mark the top and the bottom of where that color changes, so it doesn't become kind of, you know, it's going from being where it's blue skinnier to where it's blue it's like big. Well, so the but the only thing that's going to get painted blue is the actual trim pieces, right? And so that, there is a there is a delineation line where it will end and come white. Sure, but you're kind of inverting the the previous. Oh, the previous way was. Uh, yeah. Oh, so I didn't. So I didn't see the pattern on the old one. You want me to paint it white, blue, white, blue? N no, in the sense that if you look at the, you know, look at the original photo where. And, and actually, you can see that it appears to be square at the top. And, oh, yeah. And square at the bottom. Right. right. So so there is some precedent for a square thing, but it's come it comes down square. And then you have some, you know, some, obviously a lathe has been used to, to take material away from that. So where it's become the where where it's white, it's it's the thicker part and where it's carved away, it's it's blue. Right. So where it goes from thick white to skinny blue. It's kind of hard to see, but I pulled it up. On the oh, screen. there it is. Yeah. Okay, it's yeah, yeah. Part here, right, and here where it's skinny and rounded. Yeah, so it's dark, and then I mean, I'm going to like router it up. So if you, I didn't, I didn't really think of it. Meredith caught me by surprise. This is, I need a square piece so that I can get the little braces on. So I'm kind of set on that on the top. Like I need to have this. I need to have that. So it either needs to go on the bare post. If you want me to just forego that this upper trim piece and just put this uh, 40, the, the trim element on it, on straight onto the post and then come down. I mean, I can run multiple chair rails. I can run two small bands of chair rails and then a larger uh, band of chair rails. It won't be a turned post, but it will match that paint job exactly. 
What if you rounded the edges enough to give somewhat of an appearance of a rounded post and you would just be, you would leave the top, the top and the bottom basically square, maybe take a slight edge off, but then take more edge off here and then just paint, paint that to match. Paint it to match. Yeah. Cause you, you still have the old. Yeah, posts. I got the post still, sitting. Yeah, yeah. So you'll be able to yeah. could even put them up next to it to get yeah, yeah. the right same general yeah. location. Yeah. So you leave the top and the bottom is square, and, square but and just, then taper it in and just go up. Take the the sharp edge off. Yeah. And then take more off in the center section where the original post was rounded. Well, was that turned. three quarter inch. Um, if you look at the pictures on the. It'll be rounded. Of the chair rail? Yeah. Um, it'll be rounded significantly. Um, should be near the end. Yeah. Try to do the finish work, the detail work near the end of the packet. There it is. It's quite a, it's quite a, there I have one, see? And I did that where it's yep. all a continuous rounded edge. And, and I, I can even go one larger than that. Yeah. And so Does square that, at the that, bottom. That, Square at the, the top and in the top. And again, come as close as you can to match the profile of the original post. Yeah, okay. You can use the original post yeah. as a template. You just set it beside it to, to mark it. Um, I will come as close to the original post as I can. Uh, I want to suggest a simpler solution, I guess, because I, I, I don't think this adding pieces uh, it is going to work out real well. But... Uh, I would just say do a significant chamfer, uh, you know, leaving some square space up at the top for your bracket and some at the bottom, and do a pretty severe chamfer on, on the corner. Not not round it, but just make a a chamfer with a a, a nice uh, taper into the square. Okay. Just an honest, straightforward. Rather than do it. Rather so. than add trim again, you can just paint the stripe around to match what was on the original post. So from many angles, it will appear to be as close as you could get to what you had. All right. Okay. I can match the paint job on the original post. And you're firm and not redoing the shingles staggered. I I just I won't have time. I just won't have time. Uh -huh. How about planting some tall shrubs? Uh, the, so the garden the garden's <laughs> coming back. There's a huge perennial garden there that comes up every year. So when it was completely redone and replanted and mulched to go with the new porch and the planter boxes are back in, most of that's going to be completely covered. I have, uh, what do I have there? I, I understand your desire, but that that seems like an easy thing to fix. Relatively easy. Post, you know, would be hard to fix, but uh, fixing this, the staggered shingles is not a, a terribly difficult task. Any suggestions from anyone else about the shingles? I, I don't have any objections to the shingles as they are. I would leave them as they are and put planter boxes and some shrubs out in front of that. There's two planter boxes already there in the in the things and and uh, two large planters on either side of the stairs and there's uh and like i said there is a well established perennial garden that comes up easily to the height of the chair rail i 
I'm okay with, I mean, if he's got shrubbery that's between planter boxes and shrubbery that's hiding 80% of it, I'm fine with it the way it is, leaving the shingles the way they are. I, I don't feel I mean, as strongly it, about it as Eric, as Eric does. It would have been nice to stagger it, but at this point, if he's got gardens in front of that height, it's most of it, you're not going to notice the difference. I really appreciate your recognizing that it's difficult for us when someone has already completed the job and then we then we um, are asked to approve or not approve. This is my this is my third time through and I sincerely apologize. I didn't I am a firm believer in the design review process and I'm a, a firm believer in city planning. Um it's, unfortunately, it's happening more and more. Yeah, and I did, you know, and it, you know, in my own defense, it doesn't happen with me. It did this time. It was a bit of a crazy summer, as you know, and um, I just, yeah, but I, you know, the building department was closed. I understand it relocated fairly quickly, but I didn't know that. I was not aware of that. Um, all I knew was city hall. Hardest was part is that your house is listed on the National Register of Historic Places as contributing. So there's it sort of uh, nails a special sign on your building that you should try to preserve it as much as you can if you're doing repairs or replacing uh, components. To, so in to, my defense, I would say pulling the big red brick siding off it was a good thing. No, that was a good start. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're better off than we were. You couldn't see those staggered shingles before. They were wrapped in siding. So the whole house was wrapped inside. Yeah. So no, it was. No. no. I try. I try hard. I try hard to put it back to what it was. Well, but again, between the flower boxes, if you again rounding the post as much as possible in the center, or leaving it square at the top and the bottom, and rounding it as much as possible, and then painting that to recreate the pattern that you had before. Uh, this is what, I, and this is what I'm saying. I mean, the goal. And I talked with Meredith about this briefly too. The goal is also to have things net zero. Yeah. And so for me, and it, it doesn't apply to this porch, but for me, it's always my my goal is really I like old school carpentry and I like old houses. So my goal is to put it back to what it was. And yet we do have modern things that we have to do. There's better framing techniques. There's better support techniques. There's better insulation. There's better windows. There's things that kind of have to change. That's why I do like coming here. The, the shingles are a foolish oversight. You know, if I'd come here first, if we hadn't had the flood this summer, it was going to be a fall project. And I was, you know, I would have just gotten on design review and done it. And you would have said staggered shingles. And I would have said fine. But so do the best you can to cover it with landscaping. I have extra bee bomb going in there. This summer. And, and if you need new shingles later. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's, yeah. I think we made the point, yes. <laughs> the shingles take the brunt of the weather. <laughs> one one thing you one thing you could do to, to simulate that, and I'm not, I'm not a fan of like, you know, painting something to look like it was old necessarily, but you could, and, and it's a detail you'll, you will, see in a number of places you can take a darker shade of blue so if you look at the gables shingles they're a little faded now but that is a sherwin williams batik blue on the body of it and then i picked all of the other blues in the in the color on that color wheel and i painted the upper gable end goes from the next blue up to the lightest blue and I'd be more than willing to do that on the on the porch to make it match the upper gable, no problem at all. Yeah. And even if you like skipped every other shingle, yeah, it's every yeah, every every couple of shingles gets a different color blue. Yeah. And I like it. I really like the effect on the top. It's faded. It's hard to notice. If you stand in front of the house and look up, you'll notice it. There's there. It is five different blue colors on the upper gable, staggered end. So. And I'm more than willing to do that on the bottom. Yeah. It kind of shows yeah, it should, in it, here. I think maybe people at, yeah, watching it, on the screen. You can you know, see it's almost color. white in that little triangle up above the window. And it's and it's a and it's a darker blue on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm more than willing to do that. I can probably only do three on the porch instead of five, but I can do, yeah, I'll do. In my opinion, since the the 
shingles are not going to match the top gable. I would rather see it the same color as the so, body. Like of the a house. body color, yeah. Just, just let it blend as much as it can. That was my, I was going to, that's why I didn't really think about it. I was going to wrap those shingles in color wise right into the main body of the house. That would be my I think preference. The, I think the darker color anchors the building better. I do too. Than yeah. a lighter color. Yeah. Again, just go with the landscaping as much as you can. To... Dark blue and landscaping. That's what I, I mean, that's what it was. I like the dark blue on the bottom. Um, yeah. Are you going to put any railings on the stairs? Uh, there's a metal railing. I got a call back from the metal fab guy. There are, uh, there's two metal railings going on the bottom. Um, there very simple. I can provide you, I can email you a picture off the guy's website. It's tentative. None of it's planned yet. Okay. It's a simple, it's a, it's a metal railing that anchors at the bottom and anchors to the main post. And it's just a um, rectangular metal. It's a three, three by one metal railing. Um, it's, it's very simple. It's very plain and it's going to be powder coated white. So, it's going to be what? Powder coated white. If you guys can give thoughts on that, if you have any comments on the railing, because technically the railing would right. come back to design review otherwise, um, but because we'll also have to have um, Michelle look at that for building code, because okay. it wasn't in this packet, but we can add Well, that's it. why I went with the metal railing, because I can bolt it on, and it's better, in my opinion, than a wood railing, which is going to fall apart over time, but I'm more than willing to put a wood railing on, too. It's much cheaper for me to build, build a wood railing than it is to... If you've got dark blue, I don't know if you want to think of the railing as trim, but just a, a black. Black. Yeah. That would be my It was, thought okay. Too. All right. So that's something that disappears visually. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would be more interested in the, the like the connections, the details of that than than the railing itself. Okay. Yeah, so it's a, it's a rounded plate that bolts to the, to the square post and to the, and to the step. A white railing on East State Street quickly becomes a gray railing. So black it you, is. you start with black. <laughs> I think those were the those were the options he had. He had yeah. black or white. So he had a what it was was like oil, it looks like oiled bronze. Yeah, yeah. So that's actually a perfect combination. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. I liked it. It it didn't have any didn't have any real design element to it it was very it's a very simple rail it almost disappears yeah so it'll be up to the committee to decide whether or not they want to put in an option for that tonight or if they want paul to come back when he has the we could just do an option for a simple black iron railing black iron railing and again just check with Check with the building inspector to make sure that it meets whatever right. codes there are. Yeah, I don't want anybody falling through a railing, believe me. Okay, and we can, and again, we can do the black iron railing as an option, black iron or dark bronze railing as an option. Okay. That you can add. I can go through the criteria for all projects. Exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. The removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize historic property shall be avoided. Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. Deteriorated character defining features shall be repaired if they can rather than replaced. Where the severity of deterioration requires replacement of a character defining feature, the new feature shall be replaced in kind. Any treatments that cause damage to historic materials, including but not limited to chemical or physical treatments such as sandblasting, shall not be approved. And again, this is acceptable with your treatment of the posts, as you described, and also, again, with the, we'll suggest plantings that cover as much as possible of the shingles 
uh, to, to avoid trying to replace those with staggered shingles. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with amassing size, scale, architectural features, detailing, and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties. <clears throat> Acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, entablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of a building. Architectural features on any addition shall not duplicate, but shall respect this is not an addition. The replacement of a porch that's acceptable. Outdoor lighting fixtures. Is there any lighting added or is there something that's already there? There was uh, there was lighting on the front porch and what was added was um, can lighting that goes around the outside. A recessed can? They are. They are. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Uh, the the, on the, the ceiling. Ceiling of the porch. Okay. Yeah. Ceiling of the porch. So it doesn't show from the outside. It no. just there's a down light that no, but you're not lighting outside of the porch. No. Okay. And the um and the uh the there's two step lights that light up automatically when you approach the steps at night, only at night. So I saw that. Yeah. Rebecca, I think, had a question. Rebecca, what is yeah, I do. And actually it's it is specifically about the step lights, and um I understand how they ended up white. Um, if you were going to go with a white railing, and I don't know if it's possible or not, but I was thinking that if the railings go dark, the step lights really jump out to me as white. Okay. That's an easy switch. I can yeah. use it. Like and they do come in a black, they come in a black cover plate, so. Yeah. Yeah. I think in my head, they would, they would look great matching whatever the railing ends up. So that's on the screen. That's these right here. Yeah. Paul? Yeah. Yeah. And I love. I mean, I, you know, step lights are great. <laughs> I use them all over. Are they wired or solar? Oh, uh, they're wired. So they're they're what the electric that I had was. I had two twenty amp circuits on a new um, Middlesex Electric. I think it was came in, or the guy who left from Middlesex Electric. Anyway, mm -hmm. it was a while back. He came in and put in a new 200 amp panel in the house um, and brought it kind of up to modern standards. Those were two existing circuits that mm -hmm. were replaced on the old SAM. There's two 20 amp circuits. Um, one was driving the uh, the um, existing external plugs and one was driving the existing lighting. And, um, and that has, uh, and I just, I did extend the lighting from the center light out into the can lighting. But, but that's it. And then the uh, the step lights are running off that last plug, the last exterior plug. They're hardwired in because they have a solar switch. They only come on at night. They only activate at night. They have a motion and solar. So when the sun goes down, if you approach them, they'll come. Yeah. Is that a down light? It's a down light. So yeah, the, it does not glare out in your so face at all. It puts the a face, nice the face of it. If you're going to. If the face of it isn't part of the light itself, I mean, it's just a shield. It's a cover plate. Yeah. You could either paint that to match your risers, depending on what you're going to do with the risers on the stairs. Where are you, where are you going to paint those? Or I don't, so those are stained. That's stained. Oh, okay. It's treated with stain. And I, I don't, the honest truth is the stairs were the things that fell apart first. Yes. And it's not tall enough for a, for a stair riser. So I built, I had, when I bought the house, there was, I don't know what they were for, but they're these big, beautiful four inch thick pieces of granite. So I dug out around it underneath and I put two granite slabs underneath there. So those steps aren't technically sitting in the, in the dirt, but I built, I built two by 12 boxes. Mm -hmm. Those things are very, very sturdy and they have two by 12 treads on top. But eventually they're going to rot out like every other pair of stairs rot out there and they're easily replaceable. Like I can just swap them out. 
So I didn't know. I did. They are unfinished right now. They could be painted. I don't think the paint would hold up well to them. Um, they have an exterior stain um, that I've used in the past that works really well for preserving the wood. And it's it's a natural. It's like a oak stain. It's kind of a gold, light gold, but it fades to a natural wood color. How tall are the stairs? The stairs are code, so they're they're eleven inches for each step. That was the hard thing because they weren't code before. The, the treads eleven. How how high are the risers? How high are the stairs? The stair itself is eleven inches up to that first step, and then eleven, and then six to the top. Before you do too much more work on it, check with the building inspector. Yeah, they're better than the steps that were there before. I'm just talking about the height of them. Yeah. So usually the the code is seven eleven. So yeah, seven in and eleven up. Other way, seven up and eleven up in. Yeah. And eleven. Yeah. <clears throat> and again, if you were to change the, I mean, you can certainly that's an option as well. Change the the covers either paint them or put black covers on black they, or dark they bronze. come in a like a dark brown oil bronze type look okay so i'll just swap them out when i put the railing up so the outdoor lighting fixtures structural design of outdoor lighting fixtures shall be compatible with the architectural design and function of the building and compatible with the neighborhood acceptable and lastly porches and stairs on historic structures the location of porches, ramps, and stairs shall be placed in a manner that does not impact or undermine the original and significant ornamentation or detailing of the existing building. Stairs, ramps, and porches shall employ suitable detailing to connect and be compatible with the historic and important design features of existing buildings and new construction. Stairs and ramps shall be designed in a manner with details and materials that provide the most sensitive and compatible structure that fits the building design and layout. And again, with the modifications that you had agreed to, that would be acceptable. And those those stairs are, the original stairs lined up exactly with the front door and those are in the same location. So for uh, Eric and Rebecca who aren't here in the room, uh, Steve's filling out the um, recommendations and optional change, yeah, optional changes section on the form. Thank you. We have a few tonight, so it'll be a few minutes. My postman, who uses those stairs more than anybody, approves of the stairs. He thanked me for them. Has Michelle been over yet to take a look at things? I know she looked through all the photos that Michelle Sabri are no. the inspection. Okay. No. I think she wanted to see what Get a, design review, see. if they had anything to say. Uh, um, but I'll be seeing her tomorrow. So I'll let her know how to make one. And then she should be in touch to set up a, a meeting to come over and I'll let her know about the railing too. Okay.
so I made the several comments. One was the structural post on the front porch will be modified to closely represent the original turn post as much as possible in painted to also match as much as possible the original paint patterns as much as you can determine. He said landscaping and flower boxes applied to the face of the front porch are suggested as an alternative to replacing the shingles and the staggered pattern. And then I wrote that the applicant has the option to install black or dark brown simple metal railings for the front stairs, which meets code requirements. Okay. Anything want... other suggestions to add or? Do you want to add changing the plates on those lights? Sure. A small matter, but it's a matter. Thanks for catching this, Martha. I just said that the stair light plates will be either a black or a dark bronze color. Okay. And based on those, does anybody have anything else we should add? Sounds comprehensive. I'm sorry? It sounds comprehensive. Okay. <laughs> sounds good. All in favor of the application with those modifications, speak your names. William. Martha, I'm in favor with the modifications, but I also have a personal preference that the porch shingles be painted to match the body of the house I'm, to make it blend as much as possible. I agree 100%. I think that was the proposal. That was in the proposal, yeah. so that's fine. That was the original proposal. And I vote in favor as well. I'm, I'm voting no uh, based on the uh, staggered shingles on the front. Cover them up with uh, bushes doesn't do any good. I think the treatment on the post should also be simpler. And then we have Rebecca. We're, let me just be clear on the post because I thought we were going with that simpler. So square at the top and the bottom. Yes. To accept the floor to lead detail at the top and then a nice chamfer. As in the much middle, as you can chamfer in the middle, right? And then by the time you paint the stripes around, right, you'll come as close as possible to, to what that original representing the original post. Yeah. So, so Eric, did you hear that? that yeah. Paul, Paul is yeah. going to go with your that's suggestion. Good. That, that that's good. I'm still going to vote no because of the uh, staggered shingles. Okay. okay. And then Rebecca, your vote. Um, I'm going to vote yes. I'm in favor with changes. So the Thank vote you. is four to one in favor. So that's a that's the ultimate yes. Because you just need three yeses. And who can sign? So if there. you can sign, if you're good with these recommendations, you can sign at the applicant part. Um, good signature, and then um, what I'll do is I'll coordinate with Michelle tomorrow so that she can meet with you and we can get one packet for you with the zoning permit and the building permit. Okay. Um, and then she'll probably you know hash out some some code details on the railing with you, but we'll get that out there ninety percent of the time. I have to pop up to Burlington tomorrow in the middle of the day besides okay. that. Yeah, well and I have your phone number. You have my phone number. So uh, we'll be in touch. Yeah. I'm pretty easy to find over there. Awesome. Thank you, Paul. Thank, Thank you Paul. very much. Thanks for coming and good luck with your finish <laughs> finishing. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks. Thanks. Goodbye. Has everyone had a chance to look at the minutes from February the 5th?
We have. Yes. And I'll make a motion to accept them the way they are. I'll second that. All in favor of approving the minutes, speak your names. Martha. No. Rebecca. Steve. Eric wasn't there, so oh, he can okay. abstain if he wants. It's not a problem. Okay. So minutes are approved. Awesome. Does anyone else have any other business? I just have one oh, little reminder because I didn't I didn't send out another email about it. Um the second hearing on zoning regulation changes is going to be next week on the 28th before city council. Um, there were no major changes made or suggested at the hearing on the 14th. There were some little tweaks, um, but uh, the, the big one that design review might care about, um, even though these don't come before them, um, is the demolition provision, just because that does have to do and changes some of the process for demolition of historic buildings in the city. So it's worth to just take a look and see see what that's what's going on there. But the design review provision doesn't have any major changes in it at all. So the, the regulations that you guys actually apply aren't proposed to change, except, uh, yeah, those don't apply, but the Keep a note that you may be seeing bigger projects um, because they're going to get rid of residential density restrictions in the design review district if it goes forward as proposed. Thank you for the heads up. So there might be there might be a lot more development in downtown if that goes away. Okay. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. I second that. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Martha. Eric, William. Stephen. Rebecca. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming. For Monday. Oh, you put it back. It's I. I don't control when I mute. Uh, so, uh, yep, just a reminder, next meeting, March 4th, I don't have any applications yet, so I will let you know next week um, if for some reason the meeting is canceled. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks.